So one of my friends suggested that I make a video explaining how radios work. And that kind of opened up a can of worms for me and this led to a ton of research into both the electrical principles of radio and the electromagnetic spectrum. And I've done quite a bit of research on this subject, so I hope I don't butcher this. And there's a lot of content here, so I'm gonna to try to make it as simple as possible. Let's start out by saying, when you talk into a radio, the way that that data is transmitted is a voltage difference. And that voltage difference kind of looks something like this. It's in the form of a wave. It has a frequency and it has also an amplitude. And if this was a period of one second, then this frequency will probably be, be about two hertz because there's two over one second. Uh, that's how our voice, when we talk into different stuff, might be modulated. It's in a waveform of electrical signals from positive to negative to positive to negative, and so on and so forth. Once we have that information, let's look at the two major forms of radio modulation. We have AM and we have FM. So in AM, modulation really just describes the way that the data is carried, the, the form that it takes. So in AM or amplitude modulation, say we have a frequency. Technically, the frequency is gonna stay the same. So as you can see, the space between each of these waves are relatively static. However, the height of the wave changes, and this right here would probably go down a little bit more, and that's what carries the data. So perhaps, because this one is bigger than this one, it might be a different tone uh, in, in retrospect to it. So that's kind of how AM waves are carried. Their radio waves, or electromagnetic waves, they're the same frequency, so if you set your radio to, um, one megahertz, then you're going to get the AM waves for one megahertz, and the data is going to be encoded in the heights of those waves. And in the end, it might look something perhaps like this right here. Now, FM, if you don't know, it stands for frequency modulation. The other was amplitude modulation, so it was the height of the waves. Frequency modulation is quite literally the frequency. Now you may be wondering, well, if I have my radio tuned to 100 megahertz, listen to a radio station, and it's the frequency that's changing, how come my radio doesn't have to change frequency? So FM, if FM is sort of similar, it uses radio waves, but we use a frequency modulation in order to carry the data. So for example, if we have a radio listening to a radio station at 100 megahertz, you may be wondering, well, if the frequency is changing, why doesn't the radio have to change frequency? Why is it always set to 100 megahertz? Well, what your radio is actually doing is it is listening to a chunk, or it's a certain bandwidth, and it can be a wide bandwidth, or it can be a small bandwidth. And you have radio operators, of course, you kind of know a little bit about bandwidth. It's pretty much how much of the radio spectrum is being used in that chunk of frequency. So, for example, an, an FM station, and this is not correct, but for example, you're listening to a radio station and it's at 100 megahertz. Well, you may not be listening to just 100 megahertz. Maybe you're listening to 99.75 to 100.25. So your frequency of the transmitted station may look something like this right here. So say this frequency right here that's a little bit tighter might be your 100 dot uh, 10 megahertz and this frequency that's a little wider might be 99.95 um, so even though that the frequencies are different they're in that chunk of bandwidth that your radio is listening for so it pretty much listens to all of those frequencies in that set and then it puts all that information together to create the data so this right here might be a different tone than this right here. And once you combine all that together, you have music and sound. So that's pretty much the basics of AM and FM modulation. So let's look at how the radio actually takes that data and how it sends it over an antenna. In reality, radio waves are just electromagnetic radiation. And you might be surprised to learn that light is actually electromagnetic radiation as well. They're actually the same principle. So 
When we talk about ham radio, for example, we're talking about 145 megahertz, we say 2 meters. When we say 440, we mean 70 centimeters. And what that is referring to on this chart here is the actual wavelength. So say this is a 2 meter band, well, if we draw another here, this right here, this wavelength right here could be nanometers. And you know what that is? That is light. They're the same principle here. They travel exactly the same way. So what that means, and this might make it a little simpler to think about, is the frequency of light is much, much higher. But they are electromagnetic waves. So if I have light, well, a transmitter would be a light bulb, right? A light bulb is transmitting the light just like a radio. And then an eye is the antenna receiver. So the human eye pretty much has a bunch of microscopic antennas in it that receive that signal. And what it does is it converts this right here into data that your brain can decode. So it demodulates, your eye demodulates this signal. Well, your brain, your eye receives this signal and then your brain demodulates that signal and makes you see light. So all of that light is actually just electromagnetic waves, which is the same thing as radio waves. So let's take a look at how the radio waves are generated. It's pretty much balls of physics here. We say that whenever there is a current going through an object, it creates a magnetic field. So for example, the wires running around your home, you may not see them and they may not be large. There's actually a magnetic field going around these wires. And in turn, a magnetic field actually creates current. So these two are interchangeable, and as long as there's not a force acting upon those, then they will go forever. Now, of course, with a wire, there is force. There's resistance in the wire. There's resistance in the magnetic field. There's all types of things going on. But what we learned here is if we can generate current that is going back and forth or alternating, we call it oscillating current, then a oscillating magnetic field will be produced as well. So let's take a look at what that might look like. Say for example, we have a radio here. In this radio, of course, we have a little microphone, right, that we speak into. Now before I talked about those magnetic waves, or those uh, sound is pushing on a pressure plate, a tiny pressure plate that generates a uh, audio signal that goes into your radio. Now your radio's job is to take that audio signal and modulate it into, well, for example, we'll say AM modulation. So your radio takes that audio signal and it creates a AM wave that changes in amplitude based on the different sounds and loudness. And it creates a uh, carrier wave that can pretty much carry this wave along with it. Now, so now we can gather that the radio has created a wave, and that is in the form of electric current. So these right here would be positives and negative parts of the electric current, and it's alternating. Now, it feeds this modulated waveform into a system called an antenna. Now, by itself, the audio signal is quite small in voltage, and it wouldn't have enough to really get out there. So your radio actually takes this and puts it into an amplifier. And what that does is it makes those highs much higher and we just get a lot more voltage uh, with the whole system. So now we have this giant waveform and it's pumped with power and it's oscillating between positive and negative. So we feed it straight into, for example, um, an antenna. Now in this antenna, we have this oscillating frequency. So we have these positives and negatives. And what it does is it causes these electrons in the antenna, right? All these electrons in the antenna are gonna start vibrating back and forth. They're gonna be 
positive, negative, positive, negative. And they're just going to go back and forth. And what we know about alternating current is it creates a magnetic field. So with all of this going back and forth, we start generating a magnetic field, right? And this magnetic field is reversing constantly because these electrons are reversing constantly. They're going up and down at the same frequency, uh, the same amplitude that the radio is broadcasting at, and it's creating an interchanging current and an interchanging or oscillating magnetic field. And these two go hand in hand because we know magnetic fields generate current, or, uh, and then current generates magnetic fields. So, for example, here we might have a magnetic field that is going this way, right? And it gets pushed out, and then over here we might have one going this way. And then here we might have one going this way. And then here we might have one going this way. And that's because these magnetic fields are not bound to the wire and they're acting on the electrons and the electrons are acting on it and it's creating a oscillating uh, current kind of in the air oscillating with a magnetic field. Now this is going to be an awful diagram so I'm going to show one on the screen kind of what it actually looks like. But what you're going to see here is if we turn this back into the waveform we might start seeing that waveform up again. And as it goes down and it goes up, and we, we, we have this magnetic waveform. Now, the magnetic field and the electrons are, are, the electric field and magnetic field are actually 90 degrees from each other. And it is coming out at the wavelength of the frequency that we are transmitting at. So, anyways, what happens here is we have this oscillating magnetic and electric field, and they go on, and they go on at the speed of light. So the speed limit of the universe, they are going at the speed limit of light, or they're going at the speed of light. And that's pretty fast. And it's because, well, light travels the same way. It's the same effect. So eventually, these radio waves have to run into something. So what do we use to receive radio waves is, obviously, we have another antenna, right? So we have another antenna here. And when these magnetic waves, electromagnetic waves, hit this antenna, they cause something to happen in this antenna. And we all know that electrons are in the, already in the antenna. Electrons are just part of atoms. So all, we have all these little electrons sitting here in this antenna. And once these magnetic waves start slamming into this antenna, we get a vibration of these, electric, of, of these electrons. And they cause the electrons to start oscillating in this antenna, and they oscillate at the same frequency that we are getting through the air. And well, if you have a change in voltage, then you have if you if you have a change in uh, negative and positive current, you have a voltage. And so what this does is it actually creates a small signal on this other end that is exactly the same as this one over here. So it goes through the air, it slams into the antenna, the electrons start moving back and forth, it generates a current, and we get a signal. Now this alone wouldn't be enough to actually start hearing sound. Well, actually it would if you're familiar with crystal radios, that's how they work. But typically with a radio that we use in modern days, this right here goes through a amplifier as well. So our amplifier over here does the same thing that it did over here. They're the same concept. It takes that signal and it creates a much stronger signal. It creates a much stronger signal. And it's going to be pretty much just like this waveform that we started out with. And that stronger signal is going to be demodulated. So all those peaks, the length of the peaks and all that data that's preserved is going to turn straight back into sound. And it's going to be fed into a speaker and you can hear what's going on. So, I thought this was a pretty cool video to make. I've done quite a bit of research on it. Uh, pretty much everything should be accurate as what I said. But if I did get something wrong, please, please make sure to correct me down in the description. I just wanted to explain a little bit and research some about how radio waves actually travel in space. 
Me being a ham radio operator, I know everything about the radios, but I didn't know much about the electromagnetic spectrum and how they actually travel. So I really hope this is an interesting video to some of you. And if you like the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, 73.